with his misdeeds, kindles his own hellfire. Brothers and sisters, turn back, for the way of the flesh is the way of destruction. <laughs> for he who thinks only of earthly pleasure and heeds not the commandments of the Lord is riding straight for hell's fire and brimstone. Ah, oh, shut up! Who cares? <laughs> I do, friend, and I aim to do something about it by building a church in this town. A church? <laughs> Why do you want with a church in no man's land? To make it every man's land, friend. Would you help by contributing something? Sure. I'll help put out the fire. <laughs> Thank you, friend. But you shouldn't have done that for me. For you? That was my drink he took. Am I good for a drink? I figured you was too good, but... Thank you. There you are, friend. Now you're not out anything. I didn't know you collected enough to buy a drink. I didn't. You know, the trouble with you, old man, is that you're in the wrong business. Yes. It doesn't look like sin is paying off better. But that is Satan's way. First he leads you on, and then he trips you up. Well, don't you worry about him tripping me up. We're good friends. Here. Here's a dollar for you, church. Compliments of me and Satan. Well, don't you? Mister, we don't play that kind of poker in this territory. Well, if that's the case, then I'll, I'll just mosey along. Here, I'll shove my stake into the pot to pay for the information. Not so fast. Let's see how well he can deal on the end of a rope. That's yeah. an idea. That's right. yeah. Yeah. The, whole thing. the Bible says thou shalt not kill. It also says something about not cheating, don't it? There's more punishment in letting a man live with his sin than in killing him for it. A while ago, preacher, I didn't take much stock in what you were saying. But I'm sure agreeing with you now. Now, if you can only get them to see, I've seen enough. No, no. no. <laughs> Get them high. Now then, turn around and walk over to that wall. Be quick about it. You, bartender, take a look at the preacher. He's still breathing. Now then, collect their guns. That's fine. Now put them on that table. You, pick up the preacher and carry him out. You two fellows, give him a hand.
about all I can do till I find a doctor somewhere. You can forget about the doctor, friend. I haven't a chance. Now well, it's your own fault. Nobody asked you to butt in. <laughs> We're not supposed to wait to be asked. You mean believing in that book made you do it? Believing in this book made me want to do it. Well, it's a wonder to me you've lived as long as you have with that kind of thinking. You're not complaining, are you, friend? I don't like to owe anybody anything, not even my neck. You don't owe me anything, and I've only one regret. I shall not live to build a church. A church? Is that all that stands between you and dying happy? That's all. If I build it for you, will that sort of make you and me even? Oh, more than even. All right, you get your church. But you'll, you'll have to build it according to the rules. What rules? These. Oh, no. No deal. That stuff's not for me. Tell me, how much do you know about it? Not much. If I said your horse was a, a swayback, spavin old hunk of, of coyote bait, without ever having seen it, what would you say? I'd say you were a fool. Then perhaps you'd better read this before you pass judgment. like you traveled a long way, stranger. Yeah, I have. My horse's right front shoe is loose. Can you reset it? Right away. Craving a little poker, mister? Are you? Oh, don't mind if I do. Uh, what would you like to play? Well, I, I'd kind of like to play draw. Well, good enough. You like to cut? for a dollar. Up with another dollar. I'll see that and up two more. Well, as long as you're kicking, let's kick it good. Ten dollars. Men must have pretty good hands. There's one way to find out. I already know. You've got four tens. You've got four jacks. You've got four queens. You've got four kings. I've got four aces. Say, what's going on here? Just a little lesson, friend. When you play the other fellow's game, you never know when you're going to get a crooked deal. But according to the rule book, when you play his game, you always get a square deal, no matter how ignorant you are. A sky pilot. No. No, I'm no more sky pilot than you are. Just a fellow with a job to do. Six months ago, I would have kept all this money. But right now, I'm gonna pass my hat and ask you to donate some of it to help build a church. How about you, friend? 
reckon you didn't mean that, did you? Now, just wait a minute. You may not have any respect for that hat of mine, but you're sure gonna have some for that church I'm aiming to build. Now then, say you're sorry. I'm sorry. Again. I'm sorry. Now then, say it good and loud, because there's a certain party who's not able to be with us, but I'm hoping he'll hear. I'm sorry. Now, that's fine, friend. Now, I'm sorry that I lost my temper. According to the rule book, I'm supposed to be a peaceable man. Sometimes I, I kind of forget. Throw whiskey in my face. So you don't know me, Lou. Well, take a good look. While you've still got a look left. Mary! That's better. I wouldn't want you to go where you're going without knowing who sent you there. Only I've changed my name. It isn't Mary anymore, it's... Good morning. If you wanted to stay that way, put your hands up and keep them up. Yes, ma'am. Better go tell his brothers they're at Jack's place. He sure died nice. Look at them bullet holes. You could cover them with a whiskey glass. Think we ought to carry him inside? No, we just have to carry him back out again. Who done it? Doll Brown? Doll Brown? Well, the way she handled that six gun, it couldn't be nobody else. That don't stack up. Who never know that Doll Brown? He must have known her, the way she talked after cutting him down. Where'd she go? Took the trail to Cottonwood at a gallop? Come on. Howdy. What happened to him? Too slow on the draw. Too bad. I'm treading a female dressed like a cowpoke. Answers the name of Doll Brown, if she answers at all. Seen anybody around here that might fit that description? We saw her. So did he. Where is she now? High-tailed it for Cottonwood. What's she wanted for? Warren says express holdup down in Texas. Express holdup, huh? Any reward? Yep. Five thousand dollars. Will you just light and get that reward in a pine box ready? We'll take over from here on. <laughs> well, it's not quite that easy. I've been trying to catch up with her for three months myself. Yeah. We got a double interest. Our name's Stoner, same as his. Oh. Well, go to it and good luck. But I'll tag along just in case. I said light. We ain't a riding with no marshal. Well, then you can follow me. We ain't going to do that either. Real bad manners to grab a man's bridle, mister. You heard what I said. Light. Mighty careless, Bucky, watching one man when there was three. Not as careless as you think, Zeb. I saw you over there. Might have known it. How you been? 
Oh, can't complain. How about yourself? You still prospecting for Brother Joseph? Yeah, I'm still at it. But I can't seem to hit pay dirt. Well, you could have built that church a long time ago with a deck of cards. I don't think I wouldn't like to. But that wouldn't be according to the rules. You gents got your hand just a little higher. You're not tired yet. Should have grabbed off Dahl Brown. 5,000 would build a nice church. Yeah, it would, wouldn't it? Try to ride along with me? No, I reckon not. Hmm. Well, glad to have seen you again, Zeb. Take care of yourself. So long. So long. Oh, uh, thanks. Yeah. You can pick up your gun now, friend. But pick it up kind of easy, like. I sure hope I didn't nick you. I didn't aim to draw blood. For a Bible toter, you're pretty handy with a six-shooter. It kind of bothers me, too. Seems to be the only kind of sermon I can make folks listen to. We ain't bad at that kind of sermon ourselves. If you're in town when we get back, we'll see who can be the most convincing. you know I'd leave Cottonwood Trail and head for Rock City? Well, that's what I would have done if I figured I was going to be followed. You a sheriff? No. Well, now that you've proved how smart you are, what about it? Well, I... I don't rightly know how to tell you. But maybe if I rode away with you, I... I ride alone. You ain't no fella. You ain't no credit of the female race, neither. Run along. I can't use you. Listen, you mangy old crow. All I want is some information. My, my. Ain't we a slang wanger? <laughs> a buddy'd think you were Doll Brown. She is Doll Brown. Sure, sorry I was so unfriendly, dearie, Miss Dahl. But I had no idea you was in this part of the country. Ruby Clark in San Antonio said you knew every girl in this territory. And every man, too. <laughs> I'm looking for a girl about 20 years old. Red hair, blue eyes. Dimples when she smiles. Sounds like she's pretty. What's her name? Jane Carson. She hasn't changed it. Let me think now. Tess has got red hair, but she ain't got blue eyes. Lucy's got dimples, they ain't in her cheeks. Now, ain't nobody like that hereabouts. Come to think of it, there's a gal at the Can Can Saloon in Cheyenne that kind of fits that description. Uh, goes by the name of Rusty. Can Can in Cheyenne? Thanks. Don't mention it. trying to prove this time. 
figured you might change your mind about traveling alone. Why should I? It's a long way to Cheyenne. Is that a plain enough answer? That hat of mine has sure been taking a beating lately. Next time I'll shoot lower. Now clear out. You've got no cause to be afraid of me. What makes you think I am? All right. Why can't we settle this in a peaceful way? Like what? Oh, like a hand of poker? Not interested. You know, I... I heard Dal Brown would take a chance on anything. Kind of figured that was a little exaggerated. Get out those cards. Cut. Would it do any good? I'll take that hand. Four kings. Four aces. You. All right, I lost. I'll pay off. But I'm keeping this till we part company. And if you want to live to get it back, don't make any wrong moves. Sounds like good, healthy advice. Right, mister, let's have it. I've been wondering when you'd boil over. Well, you can quit wondering and start talking. What are you trailing with me for? Well, it's so far from what you're expecting. I don't know how to tell it to you. It's mighty important that I don't get off on the wrong foot with you. You're already off on the wrong foot. Let's have it. That gun sure comes out easy. You'd be a mighty uncomfortable woman to be married to. Something happened you didn't like, and pssst, you'd yank out that hog leg. Are you trying to tell me you're looking for a wife? No. But I wouldn't turn one down if a good one came along. I'll give you just ten seconds to quit stalling. I've got a hunch you're bluffing. That's a dangerous hunch, mister. Maybe. But I think you'd need a better reason than this to shoot a man. Then why are you sweating? There's always a chance I might be wrong. The Bible. You're a preacher. 
Well, I wouldn't say that. Oh, holy Joe. <laughs> no wonder you were ashamed to tell me. I wasn't ashamed. I was just afraid that you might stampede if I wasn't careful about telling you what's on my mind. Well, what is on your mind? A church. A church? What's a church got to do with me? Well, now, don't stampede. But I'm planning on building it with your reward money. My reward? And just how are you figuring on collecting it? With this? Now, let me get this straight. Are you aiming to make me repent and give myself up so you'll get the reward and build a church? That's it. Anybody who gets my reward will have to take me by force. Well, that's what I started to do. But building the church on somebody's misfortune sort of seemed against the rules. So I figured it was better this way. You're not doing it anyway. I wouldn't be too sure. You know, there's some mighty powerful stuff here. Why, there isn't anything that you can bring up that it doesn't give the answer to. Just listen to this. I don't want to hear it. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. I said I didn't want to hear it. Nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. I said I didn't want to hear it. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Shut up! Shut up! And in his law. Stay right where you are, Doll Brown. You're not going anyplace. Don't reach for that gun. Just unhook that gun dog and let it drop. I see coyotes are still hunting in packs. Tell her who we are, that'll change her tune. I'd know your mangy hides in a tan yard. Well, look who calls herself Doll Brown. Well, what do you know? Lou was sort of surprised, too. No bet. But you won't be surprising nobody else. What was that shooting a while ago? That's my business. It was good business for us. We'd have passed you up clean if we hadn't heard it. Take a look around. So you've changed your name to Doll Brown. We used to wonder what'd become of you. You might have found out sooner if you hadn't moved around so much. I was downright scared something had happened to Lou before I could catch up with him. It ain't gonna be long before you catch up with him again. Maybe you and your brothers won't be so far behind. Or have you given up rustling? Fast on the draw and fast on the jaw, ain't you? Get up. Get up. What's the matter with you? Sure enough, growed yourself some claws, ain't you? Hey, look what we found. The Bible merchant. Is she a friend of yours? Not too friendly. Well, get on your horse and make tracks. And if you run across that marshal, tell him to bring the reward in a pine box to Rock City. I know how you must feel about her killing your brother. But the thing to do is to... Take her back and let the law give her what she deserves. The Bible says... We don't care what the Bible says. That's what I thought. But according to the rules, I'm supposed to try. Well, you try, now get going. Reckon I'll stay? If I can't save the living, I can at least comfort them till they're dead. You mind if I read something for her? I don't want him reading that book to me. No, you don't, huh? Go ahead, but make it short. I'll shoot when you say amen. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee 
will not slumber. I'm sorry. I guess I'm a little shaky. Now you've got somebody else to read for. There's been enough reading for one night and enough gunplay. Now then, get on your horses and clear out. You're asking for trouble letting them go. I asked for trouble the day I took this job. Let's get some miles behind us while it's still dark. Hold out your hands. Even you can't play with fire and not get burned. Cheyenne's grown up. Got a show house now. Yeah. Wonder if they got a church. Take both of these. Give him the chaser. The chaser? Yeah, he's suffering from a religious hangover. <laughs> you got a girl working here by the name of Rusty? Yeah. Looking to find her. Well, I don't see her right now, but uh, just a minute. Here's to sin. Here's to the sinner. Rusty's the Jane Carson you're looking for. I've hoped that a hundred times in a hundred different places. She's your sister, isn't she? What gave you that idea? I don't know exactly. Just seems like that's the answer. Less people know about me, the better I like it. According to the rule book, what I learned stays under my hat. Yeah, she's my sister. And I raised her what raisin she got. How'd you happen to lose track of her? Persistent cuss, aren't you? Might as well have a whole hog as a half. Sure. Why not? I met a man one day. Going was rough. Things were easier for a while. Then he got tired of having Jane underfoot. So he put her on a wagon train heading west. When I tried to follow, he dragged me back. And I finally got away. It was too late. It was the end of Mary Carson and the beginning of Doll Brown. But I'm even with him now. So that's why you shot Lou Stoner. Can you think of a better reason? Oh, uh, Rusty's in that second booth over there, but she's kind of busy. Thanks. Say, what's the idea this booth's taken? You hear I said this booth's taken. Well, what are you staring at me for? Go on, beat it. Is your name Jane Carson? No, my name ain't Jane Carson. What of it? Kind of glad it ain't. We're 
to now. What do you care? Our deal was just a Cheyenne, remember? Whiskey. Two of them? No, I just got enough left for one. Put up your hands. What's the beef, Sheriff? You're Dal Brown, ain't you? You asking me or telling me? I'm saying you are. What do you want her for? For Marshal Bucky McLean. You're making a mistake, Sheriff. It won't take long to find out. He'll be here in a minute. Let me have that gun. Help yourself. Drop that gun. I ain't dropping it and you ain't getting out of here. Drop it or you'll drop with it. Dal Brown. shirt on. Can't you see we're coming into fog? My horse. They better give the horses a rest. They've had about all they can take. So have I. After you loosen your sense, why don't you stretch out for a while? I'll keep watch. I meant I've had about all I can take of that marshal trail in me. Bucky's a tough man. When he starts after somebody, he keeps at it. Sounds like you know him. I do. We're good friends. How long since you talked to him? Dry Springs. He rode in just after you left. Did he happen to say why he wanted me? Yeah. Yeah, I heard him say he wanted you for that express robbery in Texas. Express robbery. He's a liar. He was after me long before that. 
You got any grub in your pack? No, I sure haven't. I meant to stock up in Cheyenne. Well, don't keep me from being hungry now. Uh, something will turn up. Not unless we do the turning. I don't swallow that Lord will provide stuff. Yeah, I was kind of choking on it myself until that fog last night. It was nothing but blind luck. Getting back to Bucky. I still don't agree that he's... All right, so you don't agree. Instead of worrying why he wants me, you better start worrying about yourself. What do you think will happen if he catches us riding together? I reckon I'll have some tall explaining to do. Be too late for explaining then. Better take my advice and clear out before you get burned good. Thanks, but I want to see it through. You're already through. Maybe, but I'm not convinced. Where are you going to look for your sister now? Pocatello's got a lot of dance halls and saloons. Is there any particular reason why you think you might find her in that kind of a place? Sure, a good reason. This is a man's country. A girl making a living hasn't got much choice. And I know what I'm talking about, because I had to live that way myself. Till I learned how to use this. Singing and dancing. Laughing when men pawed you, when you really wanted to kick them in the face. When I find Jane, she's going to live like a lady. And I've got that express money in a safe place to back it up. You know, doll, when you've been playing with a deck stacked against you, it's natural you'd think all dealers are crooked. But according to the rule book, you can make things turn out the way you want them if you've got faith. Have you got faith? Well, I... I'm trying to have. I don't see it building you any church or converting any sinners. Or putting any money in your pocket or food in your belly. Faith, you can have it. Did you ever stop to think your sister might be dead? She's not dead. She's alive. And I'm going to find her. What makes you so sure? I just know, that's all. Well, that's faith. Now, if you just go one step further and have faith, you'll find your sister in a decent spot. Be smart at twisting those words around, aren't you? All right, so I've got faith. But it's different from yours. See that stagecoach coming? Well, my kind of face says there's money on that stage that'll buy grub, and I can get it. You take your faith, and I'll take mine. We'll see who eats first. <laughs> You're figuring on stopping me. Don't try it. What's the idea? When we started out, I made up my mind to sink or swim with you. Looks like I'm going to sink. Don't you clear out of here. Neither one of us is getting any place this way. I think we are. Well, what do you say we go get something to eat? Coming down the hill, I noticed a ranch house just around the bend. Well, why didn't you say so before? 
before would have been too soon. You go in and rustle some grub. I'll take care of the horses. thunder did you come from? Well, I, I was thinking the same about you, and, you know, I wasn't counting on that. I mean, I didn't think our trails would cross again so soon. <laughs> well, me neither, but I'm glad they did. Yeah. I uh, spotted this cabin. Figured somebody hereabouts might have seen Dal Brown. Still chasing her, huh? Yeah. Well, tell me, Bucky, what, uh, what makes you think she might be here? Oh, just playing a hunch. Almost had her last night in Cheyenne, but she got away. Took out for Boulder. You're kind of lost, aren't you? Boulder Road southeast of here. This road takes you to Laramie. I know. That's where the hunch comes in. She's got a habit of starting off in one direction and then switching to another. Oh? The only thing that I can't figure out is your partner. Partner? Yeah. Seems to have thrown him to somebody. Don't know much about him, except he rides a gray horse. Uh, it'll be his hide, too, if they're together when I catch up with her. How'd they happen to send you after Dahl? Texas isn't your territory. I don't want it for what happened down in Texas. Yeah, but you said you had I a warrant. I know what I said. My excuse, not my reason. I never knew you to go after somebody just for the glory. There'd be no glory in this. You know, Bucky, sometimes it helps to talk when something's bothering you. Can you keep it under your hat? Be surprised what I'm keeping under it. This was taken about 15 years ago. The oldest one's Dal Brown. The other, her sister. And my wife. Your wife? You mean that you're married to Dal Brown's sister? About two years now. It's a little hard for me to believe, too. There can't be any doubt. Doll's real name's Mary Carson. Then all you want Doll for is to tell her where she can find her sister. I want her so she won't find her sister. Wait a minute, Bucky. You're stirring up too much dust. I don't savvy. If you love somebody a powerful lot, say, like your mother, and you suddenly found out that she was bad, clear to the core, how would you feel? I reckon I'd be jolted right down to my heels. Yeah. Well, that's what's in store for Jane if she ever finds out that the sister she remembers is Dal Brown. I'm gonna see to it that Dal Brown ends as Dal Brown. That's pretty cold-blooded talk. Matt has a right to protect his home. Yes, but he doesn't have a right to set himself up in judgment as you're doing. There's no other way. Yes, there is. There's always another way. A man never starts killing until he stops thinking. Let me see if I can find Dahl and explain how things stand. I know you mean well, Zeb, and thanks. But from all I've heard, this is the only thing Dahl will listen to. Come on, rustle me up some food. I'll hit the leather again. Wait a minute, Bucky. Look, Bucky, uh, uh, you've had a long, hard ride. Why don't you stretch out on that bench for a spell? And I'll yell when the grub's ready. Oh, I'm not tired. I'll give you a hand. Oh, no, thanks, Bucky. Uh, I can do it better myself. Say, you act like you've been caught dealing off the bottom of the deck. What you got in there? Never mind. Just stay out. 
kind of talk makes me real curious. My being a peace officer, I always like to see things I ain't supposed to. I'm warning you, Bucky. We've been friends for a long time, Zeb. I'd kind of hate to see it end, no? Then do as I say. Come to think of it, you ride a gray horse. I'm going in, Zeb. Oh, I didn't know we had company, Zeb. McLean's name, ma'am. Bucky McLean. How do you do? I'm Julie Gay. Pleased to meet you, ma'am. We're just about to sit down to breakfast. Can I put a plate on for you? Well, uh, thank you kindly, ma'am, but looks like you've got company enough already. Besides, I'm in kind of a hurry to get to Ogallala. You see, I'm chasing a girl, too. A good-looking fella like you shouldn't have much trouble catching a girl. <laughs> well, maybe not an ordinary one, but this one's doll brown. Oh. Well, next time we meet, I hope you won't be in such a hurry. Me too, ma'am. <laughs> Why, Zeb, you old son of a gun, you. So that's what you were hiding. You had me thinking all kinds of things. You old hypocrite. I never would have believed it. I wouldn't have either. Hope I'm around for the wedding. Have a nice breakfast, Zeb. Take that as a right nice compliment. You never called me a woman before. You never looked like one before. <laughs> you like what you see? Yes. Yes, it's a real improvement. He thought I was your girl, didn't he? Seemed to be the general impression. Do you mind? Do you mind? The way Bucky was thinking doesn't hardly fit in with building a church. Three the crowd. Let's leave the church outside. Afraid that'd be a little hard to do. Not any harder than for me to get rid of Doll Brown. Do you know why I... why I let that coach go by today? And why I used this on your friend instead of a six-gun? Do you? I guess I'm a better preacher than I thought. Guess again. This isn't quite the way I had things figured out. I was aiming on winning it for that church, not for myself. You'd make it a lot easier on yourself if you'd forget about that church. Feeling different about you hasn't made me feel any different about repenting for my sin. Even if it meant finding your sister? I don't get the connection. I suppose she was living the way you'd want her to live, instead of the way you've been thinking. Don't start that again. And suppose that going to her as Doll Brown would cause nothing but trouble for both of you. Would you give up the hunt? What are you driving at? Happens to be true. True? You know where Jane is? Yes. Where, Zeb? Where? Sorry, Doll. I... I'd like to tell you, but I can't. You can't even tell me about my own sister? Why? Because I promised I wouldn't. Promised who? Well, that's not important. The main thing is that... Was it Bucky McLean? Why was he talking about Jane? What did he say? Oh, Zeb, was the law got her? No. I just told you that she's well and happy. And now you're going to tell me where she is. Oh, please, Zeb. Look, doll. I know how much you want to find your sister. But for your sake, as well as hers, there's only one way you can go to Jane. And that's as Mary Carson. Meaning what? Meaning you've got to go back to Texas first and settle up for Doll Brown. So that's it. Why, you penny anti soul saver. You're so set in reforming me, you'd even use my sister for bait. Well, you can keep your promise. I'll find out from Bucky McLean himself. get anything. 
anything out of Bucky McLean with a gun. You'll be sorry the rest of your life if you try it. Who said anything about using a gun? Don't turn around. <laughs> well, Miss Gay. You don't mind very well. Well, not when I smell perfume like your work. I'll have to remember that. Evidently, you didn't catch it all brown. I'm not sure. But I will. Did you hear the latest thing she did day before yesterday? No, what? Held up a stage of show folks over west of Granger. Took the whole shebang. Money, luggage, coach, everything. My gracious, what happened to the poor people? She scared them so bad they must be in St. Louis by now. <laughs> I'll bet she got the surprise of her life when she opened that luggage and found nothing but women's clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet. <laughs> Have you seen Zeb around? Zeb? I know. Is he in town? I thought he might be. Uh, what's the best hotel? Well, I'm staying at the palace over there. I guess that's about as good as any. Thanks. I'll try it. Goodbye for now. Goodbye. Who's that? Her name's Julie Gay. What's on her mind? That's what I was wondering. Uh. Oh. Get in there, boy. Come on. Zeb! Hello, Bucky. You sure pop up in unexpected places. Yeah, the man has to work deep. I, uh, saw Miss Gay this morning. Yeah? Oh, quite a girl. If I wasn't already lassoed and hogtied, I'd give you a run for your money. Well, that's one load off my mind. Hey, how about you two having supper with me tonight? Well, uh, that's mighty nice, but, uh... But, uh, you've got some other plans, man, huh? No. No, as a matter of fact, I hadn't even planned on seeing her. Oh, no, that's the wrong kind of planning, Zeb. Got to keep a tight check rein on a girl like her, or you'll wind up holding an empty bridle. Come on, I'll get yourself cleaned up and get over to the hotel. No, I reckon not. Any particular reason why we shouldn't all have supper together? I'll be over there in a little while. Oh, that's better. See you soon. All right. Bucky McLean. Well, I didn't know we were neighbors. Neither did I, until I smelled your perfume. <laughs> it's the second time it's given me away. <laughs> but I'm glad, because I've been trying to decide something, and maybe you can help me. Sure. It's a problem. Well, I got a job today, and I can't make up my mind what to wear. How do you like this? Well, uh, what is this job? Singing downstairs. Start tonight. <laughs> well, you won't have to worry none about your voice. <laughs> Guess that answers my question. But there's uh, still another question. Is Zeb going to like it? You seem to jump to conclusions about Zeb and me. We're just friends. Oh. Huh. Just friends, huh? Yeah, that's all. I like him because he's so good, and he likes me because I'm so bad. <laughs> Come on in, Zeb. It's like you and I are going to have to eat alone. Miss Gay's got herself a job. A job? Where? Downstairs. 
How do we look? Well, I, I guess the customers won't do any complaining. <laughs> Zed never has approved the way I make my living. Uh, yeah. Oh, I think I'll get myself some hot water and scrape off this stubble. What odds will you give me now that I won't? I was just coming back, Zeb, to see if maybe you want a little shaving water, too. I've already shaved. Huh. You must be losing your eyesight, Bucky. Uh, well, who wouldn't with a pretty girl like her? Huh? <laughs> what odds would you give me? He doesn't suspect something already. His kind always suspects something. You'll never find out about your sister this way, doll. Bucky's too smart. Besides, he's in love with his wife. I wish I could tell you how much. I've known a lot of men who were in love with their wives. Yes, but they're not like Bucky. Zeb, there's a certain time when any man will talk. I said man, not a would-be preacher. I've left my way from Houston up to north of Laramie. My eyes and kept them sharp to see what I could see. Oh, there may be lots that I don't know, but still I know a lot. That's the thing that satisfies a man is what he hasn't got. Shoot, shoot, fly, don't bother me. Shoot, fly, don't bother me. Shoot, fly, don't bother me. Shoot, fly, fly away. I never try to change the brand of any man I see. The only married man I want is one that marries me. But a man without a stack of chips will never buy a ring. And you never get no honey from a bee without a sting. Shoo, shoo, fly, don't bother me. Shoo, fly, don't bother me. Shoo, fly, don't bother me. Shoo, fly, fly away. She's all right. Boys, if you're trying to get rid of me, you're going about it in the wrong way. <laughs> oh, I see we have a self-appointed preacher in the crowd. Folks, meet Zebediah Smith. <laughs> I don't know where he got the idea, but he thinks I need reform, and he sure been chasing the devil out of me. <laughs> Tell you what I'm going to do, Zeb. I'm going to sing this next song just for you. Bring an in. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Now, come on, everybody, join in. While you're singing, let's hear some of those sheaves jingle on the stage. Bringing in the sheaves. You can have them to help build your church. Go ahead, Zeb. Well, with her working for you, you'll have that church built in no time. No, well, thanks. Come in. Well, my first visitor. What have you got there? A bouquet or a hat full of rocks? Hat full of sheaves. Zeb wouldn't take it? Nope. Turns you down flat. Why? Has he given up the idea of building the church? No. Guess he just doesn't want to build it with that kind of money. Poor Zeb. Always looking a gift horse in the mouth. You should have made him take it. You don't make Zeb do anything. You know that. He takes his religion too seriously. Too seriously for us sinners, you mean. So he's been after you? Well, there's a couple of things we don't see eye to eye on. Well, I'm glad to have company. As one sinner to another, pour yourself a drink and have a seat. Thanks. 
Well, you gotta give him credit, though. Takes plenty of guts to do what he's doing. More than I've got. How long you known Zeb? Sometimes I think too long. What part of the country are you from? Well, I've never been in one place long enough to be from there. How about you? Uh, same for me. Well, now that we know all about each other, see if you can untangle these laces. Uh, sure got them all mixed up. You haven't said a word about how you like me out there. <laughs> you were better than a shot of whiskey after a hard day. Well, that's something. I don't believe you could have tied a better knot in these if you'd have tried. I don't believe I could find a better man to untie him if I tried. Uh. Hello, Sheriff. Howdy. Oh, you made good time. Yeah, I left as soon as I got your telegram. How's Cheyenne? Rip roaring as usual. Uh, where is she? Come on. Take a minute. I want you to meet a friend of mine, Sheriff Duffy of Cheyenne. Hello. Howdy. What do you think? Mm. Well, the size is about the same. The rest of her sure ain't. Oh, it, it couldn't be her. What about him? Was he there that night? Huh? Oh, uh, I didn't see the man that shot the lights out. Would you mind telling me what this is all about? Yeah, what's this in you, Bucky? I've been a peace officer so long, I'm even beginning to suspect my friends. Come on, Sheriff. Huh? No. What are the odds now? Closing this little Sunday talk, friends. I'd like to say that the devil has plenty of places in this town. But the Lord hasn't got a single one. So I'm going to pass my hat and ask you to help me do something about it. Thank you, friend. Bless you. Thank you, lady, and bless you. Thank you, friend. Don't I get a bless you? Sure you do. Bless you. Thanks. Another writing lesson? Oh, yes. Bucky's been wonderful about teaching me. You know, I'm getting so that I'm not even afraid of a horse anymore. Huh? We're riding over to Barton Flats today to see a fellow who talked to a fellow who thinks he saw Dal Brown in Cedarville. Well, isn't Barton Flats a pretty long ride for a beginner? Oh, don't worry about Julie. Go to Sears, Zeb. She's really made progress. Evidently. You can do anything if you have the faith. Well, just a moment, Bucky. I'd like to talk to you alone. You mean uh, preach, don't you? No, I mean talk. I only preach to folks I don't know. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Get it off your chest. You've been spending quite a bit of time with her these past few weeks. Yeah, for which you ought to be mighty thankful. You've been downright neglectful, Zeb. Lucky you got a friend riding herd for you till you get your fences mended. It's my friend's fences I'm worried about. <laughs> he's so interested in helping me, he's forgetting his own herd. Oh, I don't think so. I'm no cold, Zeb. I won't jump the traces. Not deliberate, maybe. But it's like gambling. A man starts out, he puts a limit on what he expects to lose. But how many stick to that limit? Now <laughs> oh, you're shining at shadows. Sometimes you can see more from the sidelines than the man bulldogging the steer. If I was you, I'd get off the sidelines. Come on, wake up, Zeb. Can't you see she's only making a play for me so she can hog tie you? 
<laughs> Come in, Bucky. That shows you what habit will do. I thought you were Bucky. Glad to know he's still knocking. How are things at the stable? All right. Lace me up, will you? If your hands are clean. You're a fine one to talk about clean hands. <laughs> you don't sound very happy. I'm not. Then why don't you tell me what I want to know, Zeb? It's your last chance. Bucky's celebrating my birthday with me tonight. In my room. Now let's forget about Bucky and your sister and clear out of here. Just you and me. We'll head further west and start fresh. What about your religion? We'll forget that, too. Have you got your rule book with you? Tear it up. Bluffed me out once, Zeb. Now we're even. the saloon there was a guy in town trying to build a church. At a hunch it was you. Even my horse could figure out a hunch like that. Where is she? Speak up. Where is she? Why ask me? We separated several weeks ago. Where? Over Laramie Way. Where was she heading? You'll talk or we'll beat it out of you. Where's Dahl Brown? Speak up, or you'll get some more of it. We ain't going to get nothing out of him. Let's shoot him and get out of here. Hold it. Turn them loose. Back up with your hands up. You're the Stoner Brothers, ain't you? Yeah. Sure turn, Zeb. What do you want me to do? Nothing. Nothing? Don't you even want me to lock them up? No. Anybody singe my hide like that, I'd want to get even. Where's your horses? Down the street. I'm going to see that you get on them. Thunder! 
Where's my gun? I'm going to put a couple of slugs in that livery stable and hurry Zeb up. Never mind about Zeb. What do you mean, never mind about Zeb? We can't have a party without good old Zeb. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, we can. Oh, uh, what kind of talk is that? Zeb's a real fine fella. You invited him yourself, didn't you? Yeah, sure I invited him. But if he doesn't want to come, that's his business. Now, come well, on, let's have another drink. Sure, it's a good night for it. That's a good idea. Wet outside, wet inside. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, you sit down. I'm Barton. Yeah. Uh, you know something? You're the first bartender I ever saw look better than his whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real pretty speech. <laughs> Here's to you and me. And good old Zeb. Will you forget about Zeb? Why, you little devil, you. So I was only shying at shadows. What's on your mind, Zeb? Have you got something you want to tell me? Yes, but not what you think. Well, then it can wait until morning. This is a one-man party. I'm afraid this little party's over. Neither one of you would listen to me before. But you'll both listen to me now. A deputy. That's right. The sheriff just made me one. <laughs> well, what are you going to do, Zeb? Put me in jail just for calling on a lady? No, I'm going to put the lady in jail. You're under arrest, Dal Brown. Dal Brown? Her? That's right. Why, you meddling soul saver. So I was right all the time. I thought you was my friend. I'm trying to be a friend of both of you. What does she know about me? Nothing, but you know something about her she'd like to find out. Leave it alone, Bucky. She's my prisoner, and I intend to see that nothing happens to her. I'll give your gun back to you in the morning. Now get out. Kind of looks like I overplayed my hand, doesn't it? Lucky it was with me. Then don't arrest me, Zeb. Please give me another chance. If you do, I, I promise I'll stop trying to find Jane. I'll do anything you want. I'll be anything you want. That's what you want, isn't it? Instead of turning me over the law, we can... I thought that sounded too good to be true. Put these on. You look more natural when I lock you up. Bringin' in the sheaves, bringin' in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Would you call me a sheep, Zeb? You brought me in. Well, hello, full moon. Come on in, show him what a good Christian you are. Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing. All right, that's Bring... enough. Put that tray down and get out. I thought you liked that kind of singing, Zeb. I do when the spirit's right. <laughs> it's my spirit that bothers you. Well, maybe the Bible will give me the right spirit. 23rd Psalm. Let's see what it's got to say. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Go ahead. I wouldn't read any more of that if it would get me out of here. Might even do that if you believed in it strong enough. I can take care of myself. You're just buffing on a pair of deuces, doll. One of these days, that bluff's going to be called. Then you'll turn to the Almighty. Who's that? Zeb! Zeb, there's going to be trouble. Stoners are in town with some of their bunch. Stoners? Already got the sheriff. They'll be headed here pretty quick. Where are they now? At the Palace Saloon, getting fired up. The way they're talking, somebody tipped them off about Dal Brown being here. The stoners are in town with some of their men. As a peace officer, it looks as though you might be needed. She's your prisoner. 
I was expecting that. According to the talk, somebody sent him word that Dahl was here. I can think of only one person that would gain by that move. I'm giving you this just in case. When it's over, I want it back. Do I have your word? Sure, Zeb. We'll slip out the back way, get horses at the stable, and make a run for it. Where are we going? To Crawford. To meet the rangers coming for you from Texas. Aren't you forgetting something? Your rule book. Oh, thanks. If we should become separated... We're separating right now, Zeb. So even your word means nothing. Let's say that finding my sister means more. You can't go on just by playing the brakes, doll. I not only play them, I make them. You think Bucky McLean sent word to the stoners, don't you? Well, you're wrong. I did. You? Or I should say Full Moon did for me. That was a pretty long gamble. Not so long. You see, Zeb, even though you're wearing a badge, I knew you'd still play according to the rules. And you'd run before you'd kill. Which proves what I said about taking care of myself. Give me that key. Why should I be afraid of you and a six-shooter? Because I took an oath to uphold the law. And that doesn't mean letting a prisoner escape. You almost sound in earnest. I am dead earnest. Either we go out of here together or you don't go out at all. Now then, unlock that door. Unlock it yourself. If you can. So this is the showdown. We've done a lot of beating about the bush to come to it, haven't we, Zeb? I guess it's best at that. This is the only sure way we'd ever part. Go ahead, Zeb. I'll keep her covered. That was a right interest in airfoil. Thanks for straightening Zeb out about the stoners. I reckon I owe you an apology, Bucky. Forget it. As you once said, everything happens for a reason. Maybe this will convince you that my way of dealing with her is the only way. No, it isn't. You were going to shoot her yourself a minute ago. It's different now. Only difference I can see is that I'm keeping your hands clean. Drop that gun belt. I'm not dropping my gun for anybody anymore. I'm right glad you said that. I got a pretty good reputation for being fair. Just to keep it that way, we'll start even. Oh, wait a minute, Bucky. Give me that gun. Back. Bucky. Thanks, Zeb. It's a break I didn't expect. There's something else you didn't expect. What does this mean? It means Bucky's your sister's husband. the doctor as quick as I can. Hold this and hold it tight. And don't let it loose for even one second. Where's Zeb? He's gone for the doctor. Now lie still. Why should you be caring about me? Shut up and lie still. Said, told you. But you've got nothing to worry about. I'll stay away from Jane. Seven is through. Look. Shirk called a turn, didn't he? Funny how different things look when you're lying flat on your back. 
done. Oh, please, God, don't let him die. You can have my reward for his church, but don't let him die. Please, God. One of these days, your bluff will be called. Then you'll turn to the Almighty. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. So he's got you reading the book now. Well, go right ahead. But this time I'll say amen. He leadeth me into the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. That's fine. Let's see how long you can keep it up. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. You're doing pretty good. Rod and I staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head. It's time to say amen. You can finish it to lose. <laughs> Take it easy now. You're going to be all right. Finish it for me, sir. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <laughs> <laughs> 